Mikä tuo oli? Jokin on rikki ja auton takapäässä oli outo tunne. Kato check control. Se näyttää käsijarrun vian. Meidän täytyy viettää BMW-spesialistille. Well, you certainly will have to take it to a BMW specialist. Forgive the Finnish introduction. I was going to do it in Finnish and then I decided to do it in English. So this is uh, not really a common problem, but it's something I had and I ended up having to sort it out and I did it without replacing the parts. So this usually occurs only when you go to a service, when you go to a brake service, like this poor mechanic now, you realise there's a problem. You've got to wind the calipers back on the diagnostic tool and they don't go back. When you're changing the rear brake pads, it can happen. Here's the caliper in question. Now, this particular caliper is a motorised one. There's a, another guy holding it there. So it has a reversible motor that's commanded when the handbrake goes on. Because one way to put it on and the other way to take it off. When you have a king ball in or similar tool, you'll use that in the diagno in the procedure in the workshop to actually reset that before you can take the pads out at the motor there. The motor is pulled back. We don't use these tools because you shouldn't push that against the motor. You could damage it. In the old days we did, not so much now. So our caliper there, we have the electric motor, and that's the bit where we have an issue with, and we have a mechanism inside, and that mechanism connects the motor to the piston, which pushes the pad forward and brings it back from the disc. And the problem is, you can't get that piston back, because a lot of dirt goes in the dust cover, and the dust cover sometimes lets the dirt go in and jams the piston, but sometimes, because of that, the motor gets a bit skanky. You get a bit of water in like this, in this reference image here, and then the piston can get stuck. But on this particular car, the piston was okay. The issue was the motor itself. The motor itself had become stiff and a lot of resistance in it for whatever reason. So when you've got 12 volt in and a ground, that should make it move, but it can actually overheat. And then the system will detect a current load, overload, and it'll switch it off, or it should do anyway. So you should never have a fire like that. And that's what the system does. The system will monitor the handbrake unit will monitor that. Never use that tool. Let's just reinforce it. Do not use this tool because you can damage the mechanism, make things 100 times worse. You might have them rusty like this. Generally, it won't matter on the outside, but you never know. A slight airline crack in the motor case, you can get a bit of water and a bit of corrosion. It might still work, but it'll reduce its efficiency or dirt past the seal. And you'll only find this out, unfortunately, Usually, if there's no fault codes and everything's working, once you actually try and pull the piston all the way back, because the motor assembly inside will get all full of corrosion. When it's asked to bring the piston way back further than what it should do, resistance increases because we've got all this corrosion, and it won't go forward, and it won't go back. And that's a problem, because then the car came in working, the customer will say, but you're the poor guy who's just, or woman who's just come to do the handbrake service, and now you've got a problem. So I thought I'd pull it off and bench test it, and as you can see, voltage drop, massive, 8.92 volts. And look at the current, 18.76 amps draw, massive. And you see how slow the motor was. So I've took that off the back of the, that's the bit, the motor that turns to drive the piston in and out on the actual caliper. And it's extremely slow and not efficient. Believe me, it should be faster than that, and it isn't. So we've got a problem with the motor, haven't we? Not with the piston, not with the caliper. We've got a problem with the motor itself. And we need to do something with that. So what I decided to do was, because it was tripping my power probe because there was so much resistance, I made a relay system. And with that relay system, what I ended up doing was applying a 12 volt one way and a ground the other via the relay. So I had a permanent 12 volt and I would swap it over and I would just use the Terminal 85 as a trigger with the power probe. Therefore, the relay takes all the load. And with the relay, being able to put more juice into it, Suddenly, I've got no voltage drop. It started to smoke a bit, and then it freed off. As you can see, 0 0.086 of an amp and 12 volts. We no voltage drop anymore because the relay is taking the load. So you never know. It might work. You might be able to do this yourself. I was able to put it back on the car, and the car was perfect. Look how fast that's spinning now. So never be afraid. If it's knackered and it's going to cost 500 quid, strip it, you might get lucky. There was just a bit of something in the motor Maybe it hadn't been used much and there was a bit of rust in motor. And that's all I did. Simple repair and it's still working to this day. Well, I hope you like that. So another very short, kind of quick video. Now, it might seem a very simple video and kind of, it, it is a simple video. But there's many people out there who would probably struggle with that. And uh, you don't need struggle because imagine if it was your own car. You couldn't get a caliper for a few days. It's five or six hundred quid. It's a lot of money. 
what I always said to people is, if you can have a go at trying to fix it, try and fix it. It's a, it's a safety critical system, of course, but you know, it is only an handbrake. It's still going to have an hydraulic brake. It just unbolts from the back. There's no need to, to do anything other than, okay, you will have to bleed it. So make sure you clamp your brake pipe with a proper clamp and then make sure you, you bleed it properly after. And don't if you don't clamp it, you'll end up having to bleed the ABS pump and you need specialist equipment for that. So you could probably do it on the car. To be honest, there's probably no real need to actually disconnect it hydraulically. I just wanted to do that to sort of move the piston as well and stuff. But you could probably do it on the car just by unbolting it the motor and leaving the rest on the car as I did. So maybe you don't need to undo the hydraulic side. It's your choice if you could do it without that. It's always better, isn't it? You know? And also make sure that you uh, take the keys away because when you open the door, it will probably prime the brake system and touch and it could pop the piston out or someone could press it while you're not in the car. So put a blocker wood between the piston uh, and uh, the last brake pad on the out, outer bit and make sure it's tight. So if the piston ever comes out, it won't pop out and you've got a big nightmare with brake fluid and knackered seals on your piston. These things you have to think of, don't you? Because you never know what people can do. Some people do have things. So yeah, it worked. It was smoking actually. I never managed to get it on camera, the smoke, sadly. Um, if I had, it would have been more dramatic and fantastic. But when I first applied power with the power probe, there was a voltage drop, of course, but it was smoking. Smoking because there was resistance on the motor. Now, uh, a brake system, computer, um, probably the DSC system, I guess, on this car, it can monitor the current of motor draw. And when it gets beyond a certain threshold, it'll just shut it down and say there's a handbrake fault because they don't want fires on cars. So when you get a current draw, it'll just shut it down. Well, on the bench, we don't have such a luxury, do we? However, that very smoking was the motor trying to overcome the resistance, which was stopping it turning. And once it had stopped smoking and I put the relay on, it was whizzing over good style, nice and fast. Prior to that, there was a fault code with a counter, 4,000. There should be a step counter. Of, uh, it knows it can count how many rotations it's turning and it knows when it turns X amount of rotations, that equals a Newton meter force value. It can't measure the Newton meter force value on a brake system because it doesn't have a Newton meter measuring device. But what it does is it has a, a system where it knows how many turns that piston's gone to go on and how many turns it's turned to take, to take the piston the opposite way. Therefore, it can calculate the holding force of the brakes. If the motor does not turn enough, it's going to give a weird default value of 4,000 newtons, not the real value, calculated newton meter value. So watch out for that in your diagnostic tools, live data. If there's no real, if there's a fault code for the handbrake and it says 4,000 N, it means it's a weird pre-programmed implausible value. And therefore, you know, it's probably that issue. And on this particular car, it was weird. It was just one side, the right side, and it was just dust or dirt or something in the motor. But it's still working to this day. If you like that video, please subscribe. Got 87 subscribers in two days on my last video about Flexray. If you want to know about Flexray, check out that video. It's um, on the end of this video. You'll see a link for the Flexray, my latest video. So check that out if you want to learn how to, what you should look for with Flexray. And if you're new to this job, subscribe to my channel, become a member, and you get 15 minutes every month on WhatsApp. You just have to email me, give me a number, and we'll schedule a time, and I can help you with fault-finding endeavours. Until next time, I need to now go and get some material and work on my next video. See you soon.